In the last video, we were continuing our discussion uh, for orthogonal matrices. Um, what we had derived is that if we have an xy axis system that gets tilted by an angle theta, so that, for example, if we have a vector starting here and ending here, it, of course, will have x and y components as well as x prime and y prime components. And in the last video, we derived the components of the orthogonal matrix. That's what these equations were right here. Uh, so these express x prime in terms of x and y. Now we want to do is derive a set of equations that express x and y in terms of x prime and y prime. That's what we would do in this video. Um, again, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. So here are the equations that we derived and I think that was video number 30. Let's see now if we get an expression for x and y in terms of x prime and y prime. So let's say which one can we start working with here. Um, if we multiply this both sides by the sine of theta this will give us x sine theta cosine theta. Then multiply this by the cosine of theta. We'll have x sine theta cosine theta. We might be able to cancel it out. So let's try it like that. Multiply both sides of this by the sine of theta. Multiply both sides of this equation by the cosine of theta. So we're going to have an x sine theta cosine theta minus x sine theta cosine theta. Add them together. Hopefully that will disappear. See if that helps us. So here we will have x prime times the sine of theta equals x cosine theta times sine of theta plus y times the sine squared of theta. And here we will have y prime times the cosine of theta. That equals minus x sine theta cosine theta. plus y times the cosine squared of theta. So we add these together, and what do we get? Here we have x prime sine of theta plus y prime cosine of theta equals, these drop out, and we have y times sine squared theta cosine squared theta, which is 1. So this works out pretty well. That's 1. So here then we have y equals x prime times the sine of theta plus y prime times the cosine of theta. So now we have y expressed in terms of x prime and y prime. Now let's see if we can get an equation that expresses x in terms of x prime and y prime. So let's go back to the two equations that we derived in um, video number 30, this one, and this time if we multiply
both sides say by minus the cosine of theta and then for this one multiply both sides by the sine of theta let's see if that, if that works out times the sine of theta because here then this would be y minus cosine theta sine theta y sine theta cosine theta we add them together they drop out um, let's see if this works out for us so multiplying both sides by minus the cosine of theta we have minus cosine of theta times x prime from here and that will equal minus x times the cosine squared of theta multiplying here then we will have minus y times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta that's multiplying the first equation now going across here we're going to have sine of theta times y prime and that will equal minus x times the sine squared of theta plus y sine theta times the cosine of theta okay now I guess then what are we going to have from here um, should we we're going to have to add these in order to get this to cancel so let's see this will equal minus x times the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta that should work out and that will equal adding these together y prime sine theta minus x prime cosine theta this is one so we have minus x equals y prime times the sine of theta minus x prime times the cosine of theta or x finally equals x prime times the cosine of theta minus y prime times the sine of theta just multiplying this equation across by negative one okay so I think then that takes care of all the possibilities here is x expressed in terms of x prime and y prime and what we just derived is that y equals x prime sine theta plus y prime cosine theta so here is x and y expressed in terms of x prime and y prime and then what we had from the last video we don't need this anymore here is x prime y prime expressed in terms of x and y so where it stands right now is we have these set of equations In the last video, we derived this expression in matrix form. It's this. Then in this video, we derived these equations, or in matrix form, they would be expressed like this.
Now, one other thing we could do before we try to move on to uh, uh, some more topics, but the way that we derived these equations here, uh, you know, by multiplying both sides of the equation by the sine of theta and the cosine of theta and adding and so forth, uh, that's perfectly valid. But the more sophisticated or the more linear algebra approach would be to think of it like this. Here we have, um, say, these are the parts of some vector we'll call r prime. equals some matrix times vector r. This, this is our matrix A, can be written like this. And these orthogonal matrices, of course, they're invertible. In fact, for an orthogonal matrix, remember, its inverse is just as transpose. But what that means then is that this, since it's invertible, very easily done, just take its transpose. Of course, it's non-singular. And remember what we did in our earlier videos now. If you have a matrix, our matrix A, and we multiply it by a series of elementary matrices, non-singular matrix, say it's n by n, that will give us not just an upper triangular matrix, but that gives the identity matrix. Now, let's multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of A. Well, the inverse of A times the identity, of course, that is just the inverse. But what's this? That's the identity matrix. So what this is telling us, and we have actually done this in the previous videos too, is that the series of elementary matrices Remember how this began now. We had just vector, just matrix A times a series of elementary matrices. Gives the identity matrix. But this same series of elementary matrices operating on the identity matrix gives the inverse of A. And in fact, that's how the inverse of A is found. Remember, we take the matrix, matrix A, and then we have also the augmented matrix with the identity matrix. And then we do elementary row operations that transform A into I. And those same row operations transform I into A minus. And that's how we found the inverse of matrices. And again, we had done this in the previous videos. Well, what we have right now is that here, the way this all began was, in video number 27, we had some a vector x, y, some vector, call it small r. We multiplied it by a matrix A. And that gave us another vector that we called capital R. And remember, what was special about orthogonal matrices is that A is orthogonal, then the magnitude of R is the same as the magnitude of capital R. That we discussed in video number 27. So here we have a matrix that takes small r into big R by rotating it through some angle theta. 
Or we could think of it the other way. We have the inverse of A operates on big R to give small r. Let's go back to our original equation. A r equals big R. Multiply both sides by the inverse of A. That's just the identity matrix. So now we have this equation. But what we want to say then is that with what we derived here, if this is our matrix A then, if we want to find the inverse of it, that is, this takes us from x and y and gives x prime y prime. Well, the inverse of this takes us from x prime y prime into x y. So this right here should just be the inverse of this one. And of course, we can tell it is because this is an orthogonal matrix. We can see that very easily. Um, the column vectors, the unit vectors. If we take the dot product of this column vector with this column vector, it comes out to be 0. Do the same thing with the row vectors. They have their unit vectors. Take the dot product of the row vectors, it comes out to be 0. So this is definitely an orthogonal matrix, as we knew it was because we the way we derived it all along. So its transpose should be its inverse. And sure enough, that is the transpose right here. But what we want to say is this. Once we derive this, we should be able to go through then this matrix inversion in order to derive this. Rather than doing what we saw us do in the video, we multiply both sides by a sine and cosine, then add them and get terms that cancel and so forth. So in the next video, let's take this matrix right here, go through our Jordan Gaudian elimination, and operate on the identity matrix at the same time and see if, in fact, we can derive this expression by going through that Gaussian-Jordian elimination process. So let's do that in the next video.